Progressives backed by the Democratic Socialists of America have taken over the leadership of Nevada's Democratic Party and corporate Democrats are not happy about it. In fact, they're so unhappy about it that they decided to quit in mass. So um, on March 6th, as reported by The Intercept, a coalition of progressive candidates backed by the local chapter of the Democratic Socialists of America took over the leadership of the Nevada Democratic Party, sweeping all five party leadership positions positions in a contested election that evening. Judith Whitmer, who had been the chair of the Clark County Democratic Party, was elected chair. Now, the party's executive director, now former executive director, Alana Mounts, sent an email making clear that everyone on the small staff had resigned, including the party operations director, communications director, research director, and finance director. And this is definitely relevant because what progressives tend to hear, what leftists tend to hear from corporate Democrats over and over again, is this need to unify. Uh, this need to defeat uh, Republicans, this need to work together. Uh, but when push comes to shove, when the power dynamic shifts a little bit to the progressives advantage, seems like they're not that interested in unity. The establishment had prepared, by the way, for this loss, having recently moved $450,000 out of the party's coffers and into the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee's account. Um, now that account will put the money toward the 20. 22 re-election bid of Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, who by the way is gonna come up again in the story, a vulnerable first term Democrat. And real quick Waz, before I go to you, I just wanna give some credit to The Intercept, including Akilah Lacey and Ryan Grimm who reported for this. And they have a deconstructed podcast episode dedicated to this story. So please check that out as well. And Waz, why don't you jump in, what do you think? Man, you know, my favorite part of the story, <laughs> Anna, was it said the groups angling for change from the left were trying to divide the party while they were trying to save it. Um, basically, the establishment Dems are saying that, you know, the lefties are trying to divide everybody, they don't care about the party unity, X, Y, and Z. And what they really are trying to say is the people from the left, are trying to divide the power within the party and we're trying to hoard it, that's it. And the fact that they're no longer able to hoard all of the power and all of the influence within the party um, is a joke. And you know, at, at later on in the story, Anna, they talk about how they didn't like the Whitmer lady because she 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 crushed some type of diversity initiative or something stupid like that. But again, establishment, corporatist Dems absolutely never talk about diversity when it comes to people on the left. They never want to diversify in that way. They never want a diversity of thought, a diversity of approach, a diversity of Hey man, maybe we should try to serve people instead of corporations at some point um, in, in all of this while we have the power. They never wanna hear those voices in the room. And so that's why it's hilarious that they always try to throw out some wokeness, diversity, unity crap whenever they get smacked up. And you know, I'm somebody who got a lot of patronizing tweets, a lot of patronizing texts, quite frankly, from some of my more centrist type minded friends when Bernie the lost. Norm. <laughs> yes, yes, from the normies. Well, I mean, your little radical left experience didn't work. Why don't you guys fall in line and start doing the, the proper work of working with the party? You guys can't take your ball and go home. And then of course, <laughs> that's exactly what establishment Dems do. As soon as they get their butts whipped, um, they take their ball, they go home. And you know, I kind of respect the gangsterism of even giving yourself severances while quitting. <laughs> Normally you get a severance. For getting fired, these homies said, "No, no, 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 no. We're giving ourselves severances for quitting." That was kind of gangsta. I respect that. No, no. You know, I love that you brought that up because it reminded me of, um, like, a party in a marriage who knows that they're about to 
want to file for divorce, but they get their finances in order, right? Like they move the money to an offshore account. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, 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 they get the ball rolling before the <laughs> announcement is made, you know, because like they moved like nearly half a million dollars out of the coffers into like the, uh, you know, the arm of the Democratic Party that's going to help that senatorial race. Um, and they, you know, they paid themselves the severances. You're right. Uh, very, that is very gangster, as you say. Um, but look, Look, if if Democratic operatives and corporate Democrats don't pay themselves, like what else would they do? Like I don't really, I don't really understand. Um, but I love this statement from uh, Judith Whitmer, who's now the Nevada Democratic Party chair. She says, "We weren't really surprised in that we were prepared for it, but what hit us by surprise was sort of shocking. What's sort of shocking is that for a slate that claimed that they were all about unity and kept this false narrative of division going on." throughout the entire campaign. In fact, they kept intensifying that. That's what was surprising about it, was the willingness to just walk away instead of working with us. And some of you guys might be wondering, okay, well, how did they do this in Nevada? Like what what was the underlying spark? Like what galvanized people to really get active and elect these progressives? Well, uh, believe it or not, Bernie's efforts in the state of Nevada really, really paid off for progressives because what he did through his campaign and from 2016 and on was um, help to activate individuals, voters who typically would not be politically active, who would not go to the polls to vote. And once you get people fired up and you give them hope, give them something to vote for, well, then they get involved, and that's that's what really played out in Nevada, especially with the Latino vote. And wouldn't you know it, corporate Democrats don't have a chance as soon as you activate those people. So, yeah, lots of, it's, lots of it's, good news. It's it's awesome to see people on the left get organized and professionalize their efforts and their campaigns, right? Um, It's one thing to do your little mail-ins and your callers and your commercials, but actually being on the ground, knocking on the doors, of of you know rank and file Democratic Party voters and you know and not even just people that are already in the party but activating people who establishment Dems completely ignore because we know they only care about soccer moms. Um, just you know finding new people to energize your faction is is just incredible. And again, they're doing stuff like being more targeted. Um, their data collection efforts have have ramped up. They've just professionalized the process. That you know, in 2016 was just it was just a wave of an emotion of people who felt you know that Bernie's message absolutely resonated with them. And now, in the intervening years between 2016 and now, we see that they're being more surgical, more precise about how they attack establishment Dems. Because this is the only way to get things done. You have to actually accrue some type of power. This idea that you're just gonna lobby the Dems um, who have been in power forever to just do the right thing. And they're just gonna do it because I don't know, like you convince them, no. Um, power has to be seized from them and they have to see that doing things the old way ain't gonna cut it anymore. Either get in line, Or get the hell out. (laughs) Yeah. So I want to end the story on this one final point because it's just so, so good. So remember, we mentioned the senator from the state of Nevada, Senator Cortez Masto, and how you know this is a vulnerable candidate seeking reelection in 2022. And apparently, this senator approached a man by the name of the current Clark County Commissioner, Tick Siegerblum, to convince him to run against Judith Whitmer. And the intercept caught up with him and confirmed that he was in fact approached to run against Whitmer. And he's also a Bernie fan and this is what he said to The Intercept. This is just a situation where the Bernie team won and the old guard, so to speak, we're not gonna stick around. As Jake would say, yummy in my tummy. All right. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.